Hello everyone and welcome back to some more Fallout Wasteland Warfare Season 4 Episode 9 of 13 of my settlement mode playthrough. I hope you've been looking forward to this one and I have had some requests that we try and keep things a bit more brief, a bit more succinct for these. I'm going to try and do that today although there is a new faction that is featured so I'm going to have to take a minute or two to describe how they work. But I'll try and keep these a bit more succinct so on that note let's quickly go to the settlement mode stuff and then we'll focus on what we're doing today. And here we are picking two, let's just go with that one, break here, and we'll pick that one once I put it on top here, and flip this, we can reroll one of these, Quincy Police Station, draw two boosts, keep one, this boost goes direct into your hand for the next battle, okay, I'll do that when the battle starts, that's fine, a nice boost might be helpful, National Guard Barracks, draw one weapon card, either keep the weapon card or give the weapon card to Lincoln and gain a weapon stand, we already have a weapon stand in the settlement, so we'll absolutely draw a weapon from the Wasteland deck as well. I'll do that once we're ready to get started as well, which is when I'll do the boost. That was a lot quicker. That, that's the explore phase done. Fantastic. Let's hear what we're doing today. Quest 9. Quest name. Danger is good for business. Quest overview. The Gunners are a ruthless band of militaristic mercenaries. The only thing that separated them from your day-to-day -day raiders is their more organized and well-equipped setups. Gunners are willing to protect those willing to pay their high price. A wealthy trader passing through New Hope with some gunner protection is getting paranoid and has offered caps in return for additional protection to see him to the outskirts of the region. The gunners aren't happy about it, but as long as they get their caps, they'll stay in line. So you've heard what we're doing today and we are introducing the gunners faction. I don't remember if they were added before or after the children of Adam. I believe they were before. Uh, but they are still relatively new, so they have some fancier mechanics that make them more powerful than your average a type of unit. But we'll quickly go over who I'm bringing from New Hope. We have Pennyworth, equipped with Mr. Handy Laser, Flamer, Buzzsaw. We have Nate, his equipment is staying his current default, which is Grognak Sword, Hunting Revolver, and Hunter's Hunting Rifle. We have Nora, she is bringing that Gauze Rifle again because she's just really, really good with it. Along with that, she's got a 10mm pistol and an incendiary baton in case anyone gets close to her, although she's not as good at physical combat as Nate is. We have dog meat for the first time in a little while. Dog bite, simple as that. Less units from New Hope due to the nature of the mission. Speaking of which, which I forgot to mention, because this is actually an escort for one of the few traders left in the area, there is caps on offer if we win today. Not that caps are super important for this particular season or what's going on but going forwards they might be so this is i think literally the only chance this season they have to actually earn some decent caps and by decent i mean double the usual amount is 400 if they get a major victory today with that said let's go look at the gunners so behind the three gunners who are escorting today we have just what's going to represent the caravan the brahmin is not going to be on the table for the purposes of actually being targetable killable etc that's just for show that is what's being moved by the trader and the trader itself is going to be using this model done that before in the past as well so he is the one with his brahmin that's not really there has to get through the map today so the gunners we have a gunner commander a gunner sergeant and a gunner private that is three ranks the gunners have extra rules that kick in if they are within the aura radius of an officer who is or a, a gunner that is of a higher rank than them so if the sergeant is within aura of the commander, his extra rules kick in. If the private is in aura range of either of these two, because they both outrank him, his special rules kick in, which is extra dice or uh, quick actions that let you fire. Or It's a bunch of different stuff. We'll cover it as it happens to keep this as brief as possible. The commander is equipped with a ripper and a... What was it? A plasma rifle. The sergeant is equipped with a laser rifle and the private is equipped with a combat rifle. Simple as that. They're all going to be starting on the road and we'll cover the specifics of how they're going to win. Once everyone is deployed that's also when we'll do the boost card and draw a weapon from the wasteland deck. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. Alright, let's see. We have to draw a weapon card from the Wasteland deck, so I'll just cut and draw until such time as we find a weapon, since there is more than weapons in here. Let's cut again and go for this. Oh, we have found ourselves a Super Sledge, so that's going to be added to the inventory. Is that actually better than Grognak Sword? I guess in terms of raw damage, potentially. Pretty cool. Okay, I, I thought that had a Strength 7 Plus requirement. I guess not. So that's in our storage, and then thanks to Quincy Police Station, we get to draw two boost cards and keep 
one, so let's go for that one. Oop, I accidentally drew two. You know what? That'll do. We have ourselves powerful attack. Play after a skill roll, you do one extra damage. So after you know a, uh, an attack has landed, you can up the damage by one, which is pretty cool. Or play after a skill roll, you get that's for defensive. That's actually these kind of go together. I'm definitely taking the more damage though, because we're going to need it. So here we are with everyone deployed as we are starting the game. Now you'll notice the big bundle of my units, the gunners and the caravan that is being escorted to the top right of your screen. They are following the road every turn after everyone else has activated. The caravan owner and the Brahmin just representing the caravan will move down the road yellow regardless of context. It will always keep moving and after five turns it reaches the other end of the road, roughly speaking. And they get there alive, or rather if the caravan owner gets there alive since he's the targetable one and we're just going to count him as having a bog standard uh, settler card so like four health one armor if he makes it to the end victory if he doesn't failure but primarily the purpose today is to see how the gunners perform try and get a gauge for how strong they are and now we know they're also operating in the area because they saw a chance for profit the enemies are fighting today, not many of them, but very powerful. There is two bog standard ghouls, one of them you can see there, one of them is obscured to your right by the building, right here. But, then if we pan down a little bit, we have the real threats. We have a Yogwai over here in the middle of the road, and he's just going to charge up there. And then, the unpredictable attacking from potentially any angle, we have a Rad Scorpion over here. So again, there's only four enemies. Two of them are relatively weak to take out, but any shot that's not at the Yogwai unnerving kicks in, so it's harder to land the hit. Uh, he has that rule that Death Claws and other stuff has. So, should be relatively short one way or the other uh, because of the fewer activations. Let's see how the Gunners perform. We're going to jump in. One of the enemy are going to activate first because they have less activations, and we'll just see what happens. Well, random chance is like that sometimes. The biggest threat on the table was the first to activate. Yo Guai activated and has moved up the road yellow twice. He's got 12 health, I think, and 2 plus 1 armor. He is sturdy, but he's presented himself, luckily, as the closest threat. So we're going to get a round of everybody unloading on him, and hopefully they'll do enough damage to just remove him as the biggest threat. Because if they don't, he's going to start ripping them to pieces, because him killing some 4 health, 1 armor settler is not going to be particularly difficult. So the first activation is going to be the Gunner Private. Because they have higher ranking officers, well, Sergeant and Commander nearby, they would have minus two during any reactions they do, and when they activate, they gain a quick action, which they have used to do a move. It gets reduced by half down to orange, but still, it means they're moving up, but can still fire twice. So they're going to fire into the Yao Guai twice with that combat rifle, black and yellow die, and they're hitting on fives, which is the same bog standard hit rate as the Children of Am, for reference. And they start the game with a success, with another quick action generated. Breaks one armor, so that is a total of three damage versus one plus one. And no matter which way you uncock that die, it means only the super armor protects. So that's two damage. We'll just stack the damage here for now, because we're getting another shot. That is a 9 that comes down to an 8-7. Not good enough, misses the second shot, but they have that other quick action, and they'll just do that with a prepare. And when they fire their prepare action, as I just stated, they ignore the minus 2 for it being a reaction. So that's, that's pretty good. The Rad Scorpion activated. It doesn't need direct line of sight and can burrow underground like more rats to engage via charge distance, but it's being a bit more coy and strategic with how it's moving. It wants to go pardon the pun, come in for a pincer attack. So it's moved red twice into the position you can see it. That second movement is going to trigger the reaction on the private. Now, he has that rule where he ignores the minus two from it being a reaction. However, because he's not shooting at the Yogwai, it applies a minus two again. So it's still on threes. It's not very likely, but hey, why not? And that is a six that comes down by nothing. Would have shattered all its armor, but no, fair enough. Oh, as a small correction there, he would have been shooting a long range, so it should have been a yellow and a green die instead of a yellow and a black die, but because it was a mess either way, it doesn't matter. The Gunner Sergeant activated, and because he has a commanding officer within his aura radius, he is allowed to add either a black, yellow, or green die to one attack he makes as long as, or attacks he makes, as long as it doesn't already have that colour of die, which is really powerful by itself. It also says he gains quick action attack, but his card by default has quick action attack. 
And it isn't saying he's gaining one like the the one the private just got for quick action move or just a quick action in general on activation. So I presume it's a misprint on the card. I'll go check the app for anything like that uh, going forwards. But for now, he's moving up and he's just going to shoot that laser rifle point blank into the Yogawai, taking a yellow die bonus from that special rule he has because he has a commanding officer nearby. And he hits on sixes. He's slightly better at shooting. And that's a nine that comes down by nothing, so he misses. I checked the app and the discrepancy is also on the app. He has quick action attack, yet it says he gains quick action attack if there's a higher ranking gunner nearby. I don't know what that means, and I don't know how to interpret that, so let me know. Anyway, he's going to pay for missing now because the feral ghoul closest to him activated and after a move action could very comfortably make a charge. So that is the sergeant locked in combat now and the ghoul has taken the black die charge bonus, decided at random, and will hit him next turn if able. The gunner commander activated. He has a rule where gunners of a lower rank in his aura radius don't count towards calculating advantage, although they still would have had advantage just because of how many people are on the table in general. He moved up and he's going to fire that plasma rifle at point blank range more or less. First time we're seeing a plasma rifle on the table I think. It has a special rule where it says if you land the hit, a red arrow pointing down and then physical armour slash energy armour. And this is where just using iconography can really be frustrating because I have no idea what that means. I presume it lowers it for the round, but that's just a guess. So who knows. Anyway, two energy damage base and he hits on a mighty seven. So he's got a good chance, although I shouldn't ever say that before rolling. And he rolled a 10 that comes down to an eight. So he missed by one. Good job. The final activation for the adversaries is the other ghoul moved up and they were able to do a charge into the gunner commander taking a black charge die bonus for next turn as well. So that is everyone else and now it's actually over to New Hope to finally do their activations and then at the end of the turn the caravan moves up. Dogmeat is immediately charging into that ghoul to help out the commander a little bit taking a black charge die bonus and hitting on sixes. And that is a 5 that comes down to a 3, so yep, you better believe that is a hit for 1 extra damage plus armor break. So, and does the star or borrow cap do anything? The star gives him a quick action. Probably not going to be relevant, because we're at the end of the round, but either way. That is 3 damage versus no armor. He fully broke it, so that's, that's just 3 damage through. Good job, Doggo. So Nate moved to where you can see him there, I'm kind of presenting him as the closest threat for the Rad Scorpion to go after, so it doesn't go after the caravan. I'm hoping he'll be able to handle it, uh, we'll see. But from where he is, he's going to shoot at the Yao Guai with the Hunter's Hunting Rifle. Because he's shooting at a creature, he gets a black die thrown in, and I made sure to position him such that he is just within short range for those two yellow dice to armor break or potentially do more damage. And Nate is hitting on a 5. He's better at close combat. And that is a crit, I'll take that. It shatters two of the Yagwai's armor, so he's just got the super armor left, so we don't even need to roll anything. It's only one damage. It comes down from two to one. I think I'm gonna kick in the perk right there and make it two damage. Yeah, I'm gonna make it two damage. So he's got two damage through, that means that ever comes into focus. That is four damage now on the Yagwai, which is pretty good. Absolutely cannot pass up the opportunity for Nora to crack out that gauze rifle. So she moved up, that means it charges one, and she's just going to shoot at the Yogwai as well. So she gets a black die for it charging once, and just a yellow die by default. Three damage base though, and hitting on sevens. Oop, zoom out, not zoom in. Come on, Nora. That is an eight that comes down to a seven. She did it just. So it breaks both standard armor, which means he just has super armor left. So the three damage she's doing comes down to two more. That's six damage out of his 12 health, so doing half his health in one turn, and Pennyworth might do something else, isn't that bad. So Pennyworth is moving up and he's going to crack out that Mr. Handy laser. He's out of range for the flamer, unfortunately. Yellow, green, on sevens into the Yagwai, so no negative to not shooting at the biggest threat. Here we go. And that is a crit. No crit fails yet in two crits, that's really good. Bottle cap doesn't do anything with the, no, no extra rules at all, so it's just two damage versus his energy armor, which is just flat three, so you could fully block it, and he does. Two, two damage blocked. Oh well. So that takes us to the end of round one, at least after the caravan moves up. And with that mess in front of him, that is where the caravan has moved at the end of turn one. And let's see what event is carrying us into round two. 
Helios 1, the first ranged attack each model makes this turn suffers a minus 2 penalty because they're blinded by the light of Helios 1. That is rough for me. Round 2 gets started with one of the Feral Ghouls activating, specifically the Wounded One of course, so not going to get a chance to kill it before it does anything. And he is going to strike, strike into his original target which is the Gunner Commander, who's wearing T-51 by the way. At least that's what we're counting it as today, I forgot to mention that during setup, I just mentioned his weapons. Extra black die on his first strike and he hits on sevens. And that is a crit for four damage against the poor gunner commander whose armor is three plus two, I think. Uh, three plus one, sorry, three plus one. And he actually blocked four, so it did nothing to him. That's actually very impressive. Second hit without the charge die bonus is another success. And that is 3 damage versus 3 plus 1. And he blocked it again. Wow. Since shooting isn't going to be great this turn thanks to Helios 1, let's activate the Gunner Commander. And he's just going to take a swing with that Ripper to see if he can kill the Ghoul. And if he can, great. He doesn't have a great melee skill though compared to his shooting. He's only hitting on... Well, normally it would be 4s, but thanks to the power armor it's actually on 6s. So that's not bad. So, we'll just roll these here. That is the first crit fail of the game. He just needs to do one damage. Let's see if the second one succeeds. That, thanks to his power armor, is a success. It's doing three damage, so he has one armor. No need to roll the defense die. That ghoul has been split in twain. Well, we're going to get to see what happens with that Rad Scorpion innate because it activated and thanks to his burrow roll, it doesn't require a line of sight, it just teleports basically and charged this distance of blue which is massive and got him in combat, taking a green charge die bonus and hitting on sixes has the potentiality to poison as well, hopefully that won't happen but now that I've said that, that is a seven that comes down to a six, it hits, does the bottle cap do the poison? Uh... Only if damage caused, but if it does do damage, then yes, he is going to be poisoned. Fantastic. And that breaks two armor, which leaves Nate on one, so he's definitely taking damage, even if he blocks one. Which he did, to be fair. It still does one damage through, though, and poisons him. Oh, sorry, no, it doesn't, I forgot. I was keeping the super armor pips on their cards, forgot to put them on the table for the purposes of recording, and then I forgot that they were there because I was looking at his card. He had super armor, so he actually was reduced to 1 plus 1, meaning he did fully block that attack and therefore is not poisoned. At least, not yet. Gotta try and get the worth out of that gauze rifle before potentially getting stuck in combat, so I move Nora up, she's gonna fire, she gets the black die bonus. Uh, doesn't matter about unnerving because she's shooting at the Yogwai, but Helios won. Lowering her down to 5, but still not bad chance to hit for her, and uh, that's just that's just pure spite honestly, blanking out on both those and then missing by 1. Well thankfully for Nora, it is the other ghoul that was randomly selected, that does mean the Yagwai is next though, and she is the closest threat. So that ghoul is swinging twice into the Gunner Sergeant, taking that black charge die bonus on his first swing, and we'll come down to the tree right here, first swing! And that is a 9 that comes down to an 8, 7, they're on a 6. I'm going to double check. 6, yep. So that is a miss. Take the black die charge bonus out and then they swing again. And that is a, even worse, that's a 10 that comes down to a 9. That ghoul is blind. Probably by Helios 1, actually. With the extra time I've been granted, Pennyworth has decided to be very brave and moved in front of Nora to protect her and also to try and get the fire effect on the Yogwai because that would be fantastic. So he's using the Mr. Handy Flamer. He is minus two to his chance to hit, despite being point blank. What is this, XCOM? But let's see how he does an eight. No. Would the star have actually set him on fire? I think it would have. Yeah, but you better believe it would have. Couldn't roll it for the life of me last time he was on the table. Rolled it first try this time, but on a miss. The Yagwai has charged into Pennyworth. This is where the pain begins. He's strength 10, so he's getting an extra black die for that. He's taking a green charge die bonus. That's on top of his normal swipe, which is green, blue, yellow. Kind of like a dog bite, actually. So he's rolling a lot of dice and his base chance to hit is only a 5, that's the one saving grace, he doesn't have a super fantastic chance to hit. He rolled a 5 on the dot that came down by 3, so just ignore me I guess. It's doing 1 extra damage, breaking 1 armour, does the star of the bottle cap do anything? I'm going to have to check. Breaks Pennyworth's arm, I don't know if robots can be afflicted by that, but I also I think he's stunned from the bottle cap. Yep, he is stunned and has a broken arm. That was one heck of a swing. 
Three damage at reduced by one, one plus one armor. Oops. So only the super armor blocks something, so that's two damage to Pennyworth. Well, let's hope I didn't send him into that Rad Scorpion to die. We're activating Nate, he's going to swing Grognak's sword twice. On sevens, good chance to hit. Here we go. That's an eight that comes down to a seven. Oh, it comes down to a six, actually. One extra damage, so that is three damage. No armor break, though, so it's three damage versus three armor. Doesn't block any. Okay, hang on, we'll just stack it up here. So that's three damage so far. And then same again. Because he wasn't getting a charge die bonus. We don't need the armor die for this roll, thank you. There we go. Yeah, that hits. That's a five that comes down by two. Bottle cap gives him a quick action, which he guess he can do a prepare. Oh, actually, he can break armor with it instead. He'll break armor then. I don't know if you, you're allowed to do both or if you have to pick because it does two things on a bottle cap, but they're not together. I presume you have to pick. I'll take the armor break. And that's one extra damage. So that is three damage again, this time at two armor. And he didn't... Okay, that's just straight up five damage there. That was really good. Five damage of his six health. He's usually a tough nut to crack a Rad Scorpion. In fact, I remember Grognak having trouble with him the first time they were on the table. So that's, uh, that's certainly different to how it went the first time. The Gunner Sergeant is activating and is pulling away from the ghoul to let them shoot at it, basically. I don't want him to accidentally get shot, which means the ghoul's going to get a free swipe at him before he then fires that laser rifle once. So with a minus two, this is on fours. And that is a nine that comes down to an eight. It would have been four damage, so lucky him. And then close range laser rifle is black plus blue on sixes. Almost a crit fail, but it did actually hit. The single bottle cap means that one damage ignores armor, and I've been told I think that just goes straight through as true damage is the way it's worded these days. So that's one damage, and then you do the rest by default, which is two energy damage versus two energy armor. He blocks one, so in, to in total he took two, which is fine. Oh, I forgot he was allowed to put in an extra colored die because of being within radius of the commander. I'm going to make it a yellow die because there is a chance it would do at least one more damage. There is a one damage on this. Not a high chance, but hey, just in case. It would have broke one more armor, which doesn't matter. Actually, it does matter. It would have broke his, his whole armor. So, okay. So one more damage does indeed get through then. And then finally, the gunner private, who is behind the sergeant, just going to shoot her combat rifle, hopefully just the once, to finish off that ghoul. On fives, that'll do it. Broke both his armor, just instantly removes him. With her other action though, what is she gonna do? That's something I should have thought about in trying to play a little bit faster. She will shoot into the combat with Pennyworth to try and hit the Yogwai, because they don't particularly care about New Hope. They don't really like them. So this is plus two now. And it is a hit as a result. It's three damage coming in. Her target is the Yogwai, so that's on one and three. She is hitting the Yao Guai, so 3 damage versus his 2 plus 1. He actually fully blocked it. Rough. Final activation of round 2 is best boy himself, Dogmeat, who is charged into a Yao Guai, taking a black charge die bonus, getting a green extra bonus from Pennyworth already being in combat, despite being stunned and missing an arm. And he's going to swing a lot of dice into that Yao Guai, and we're going to see what happens. Incidentally, I forgot Helios won for the private shooting, but I think it still made the hit. I hope it did. I forgot at the time. But I believe it comfortably made the hit. Speaking of comfortably making the hit, yeah, that went down by 5 to 1. So that is 1 armor break, so the Yogwai is sitting on 1 plus 1. And 3 damage. Does the nuke do anything on the dog bite? It does. It breaks his arm. I see how he likes it. And he doesn't block any, so only the super armor blocks that, and there is two more damage through. Well, this is going a lot more comfortably than I thought it was. Let's split here. We're going to do this. It's Diamond City, radio uncertain where it is exactly. The still air allows the sound of the radio to drift across the battlefield. You just heard a crawl out through the fallout, Travis, aka out of focus, nothing. So as we begin turn three, forgot to show where the caravan moved to at the end of turn two, but there it is right there. They're just sauntering by while a giant bear ravages a robot, and then a dog ravages the bear. But whatever. So the Yogwai is going first. He's going to try and finish where he started, nibbling into Pennyworth to finish him off. But he has that broken arm, thanks to dog meat, so all his skill values are minus two. Now that doesn't lower him below the threshold that he doesn't get the black bonus from his strength being so high, unfortunately. 
and that's a crit so that's pretty bad breaks one of Pennyworth's armor does the star do anything yes it breaks his arm you've already broke it I guess he peeled another one off so Pennyworth is down to one plus one only the super armor blocks still only one damage though that's not bad so one more damage to Pennyworth that's him up to three but he's doing another bear swipe and that is also a hit don't break armor this time it's three damage versus two plus one only the plus one block, so that's two more damage. So that's Pennyworth up to five. I'll sort those off camera. So let's go with Nate and see if he can finish what he started against the Rad Scorpion that I thought was going to be much more dangerous and much more sturdy than thus far it has proven to be. Uh, still getting a black charge or a black strength bonus on top of using Grognak's sword. So let's see if Nate can finish what he started last turn. And on a crit fail, uh, it's so like depending on which way you uncock it, it is literally either a crit fail or a crit. You know, I'm going to roll the 50 50 die because I, I I could choose which way to uncock that. So, circle it's a crit, X it's a crit fail. Fair enough. Crit fail, but he gets to swing again. Red Scorpion is going to live if he doesn't even have to roll a defense roll. An 8, that comes down by 2, so it is a hit, it shatters 2 armor, it's 1 extra damage, so that is 3 damage versus 1 armor, which means at least 1 is getting through, so he's dead, regardless of this, thankfully. He blocked 1, took 2, he only had 1 health left. So yeah, that Red Scorpion did not perform as well as the first time I remember him on the table, although Nate only barely did it. So that only leaves the Yao Guai as the lingering threat, which I was not expecting, but this one might actually be a lot quicker than I thought it was <laughs> going to be. Well, let's handle this little melee that's happening currently that might change once some of the gunners activate. So we're going to go with Dogmeat first since he's hitting normal. Green extra die for Pennyworth being in combat. First hit is a 9, comes down to an 8, 7. Not good enough. Needs to be a 6. Second, dog bite. That is good enough. That comes down by 5. It's massively good enough. Breaks the arm again. <laughs> I guess the bear's lost another paw. And that is one armor down. So that is 2 damage versus 1 plus 1. Well, either way, only the super armor blocks. So that is one more damage. And that puts the Yogwai up to 9 of his 12. Oop, I accidentally flipped that to the wrong symbol. And then we're just going to go with Pennyworth in the same action since he's most likely going to miss thanks to that broken arm. He's hitting on fives twice with the Mr. Handy Buzzsaw. First hit is a crit fail. Uh, not a crit fail, sorry, just a fail. With a quick action that he can't really do anything with. And... That's a success. Breaks one armor, two damage versus one plus one. And that fully blocks the damage. Good job, team. Oh, I forgot that Pennyworth was stunned, so he would have only been able to attack once, but the second strike didn't do anything anyway. The gunner sergeant has moved up and is going to fire into the melee, taking a green die since it's the only one not used in his close range with that laser rifle. So he is now hitting on eights or nines, with the help of a roll the skill die, amongst everything else. He does hit. He's not doing anything extra, and he has to hit the Yao Guai, so one, two, three, four. So one and four are the Yao Guai. One, two, three. He's hitting Pennyworth. So that is two energy damage versus why am I rolling that? It's rolling the armor die, and he doesn't block it, so that's two more damage. Is that Pennyworth down? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, he has eight. He doesn't have seven. He has eight. So he's alive on one health remaining. And we're going to stick here with the private moving up and also shooting into the combat. They don't care that there's friendlies or sort of friendlies in the way. But even with the positive bonus for shooting into combat, a 10 isn't going to cut it. And the gunner commander is moving into position. It also doesn't care about the combat ongoing and is aiming for the Yagwai. Incidentally, I went and looked up what that red arrow means. It means you use whichever armor value is lower, which is not what I would have guessed at any point, I think. So, I think this is on nines. Yeah, two is definitely good enough. One and four is his target. And he is actually hitting the Yao That was a four. So, one armor break, and that is just two flat damage. Yep, two damage versus whatever his lower value is, which would be his energy, because he doesn't have any super armor on that. And he didn't block it, so that is two damage through. The commander knows how to shoot, unlike his peons, which kind of makes sense. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He's alive on one. Nora could actually just finish this right now if she's willing to take the risk of shooting into combat twice with the gauze rifle. 
Yeah, not to go full sojourn, but this ends now. She's going to try and shoot into combat twice. She's hitting on a massive nine, <laughs> thanks to shooting into combat. Let's just see if both hits go through. That's a two, so yes, it's going through with nothing else. It came down to a one. The second shot is also going through with an armor break. That's a bit more important, so we'll keep that to one side. But both hits got through. First one, her target is on one and four. Ooh, she's hitting dog meat. So that's three damage versus his armor of two, I believe, with no armor break. He didn't take or didn't block anything and took three from that. Gauze rifle to the side. That's got to hurt. Put that there. The second hit, though, that has the armor break. This is the one we want to actually hit the Yagoi. It's hitting dog meat again. What did that dog do to you, lady? He's down to one armor. He blocked one, took another two, so he's up to five damage. What did that dog ever do to you? And unfortunately, that does mean we're going to have to go into another round because the Yogwai lives to fight another day on one health remaining. As we end the third round, that is where the caravan has ended up. Well, let's see what event is taking us into the final turn, almost certainly. Solid ground, the a model's first movement during its activation is one colour longer. That's not going to be relevant since we're just kind of brawling with the bear in close combat, but that could have been really useful at some points. So the Yogwai is naturally getting the final round almost certainly turn started and he's going to try and finish where he started by swinging into that robot. If he does it in one, he's going to try and kill the dog that Nora apparently wants dead. She's not a dog person, I guess. First swipe into Pennyworth. It's on minus two, but that don't matter when you get a crit. Breaks two of his armor. I think this is taking him out because two armor puts him at plus one. So it's just one super armor. He blocks one, takes one, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, boom. Can the Yogwai get a double kill? before getting taken down by gunfire now, because if he takes out dog meat, he's just free to be shot at. Five comes down by three, it's a big hit, it's three damage, no armor break, dog meat's armor is two. He doesn't block any of it, takes three, and shloop. Okay, there you go, I got a double kill, he's, he's getting to laugh his way to the underworld. Let's try and get some redemption for Nora. I want her to be the one to do it. Let's see if she can. Not moving first, just doing two straight up gauze rifle hits. Eight is not quite good enough. She needs sevens. The sun's in her eyes. Helios one gave her cataracts, I don't know. There's a crit. It's three damage versus two plus one armor. He only blocks one plus one armor. One damage gets through and the beast is slain. Finally, well I say finally, I think that was quite quick. And so we have come to the end of New Hope's territory where they're bidding farewell to the trader who hired them for some extra protection, both from the particularly dangerous era of the wasteland they're in, and also potentially from the gunners themselves because they weren't fully trustworthy. They made it, and that is 400 caps for the settlement. I believe that puts us at roughly 973. It might be off by a little bit, but roughly that much. And I hope that was a bit more succinct as people requested tried to only kind of go into detail where I feel it's necessary to keep track of what's going on. If you're curious, by the way, had the caravan owner been killed, which I honestly thought was going to happen, I overestimated the viciousness of just one rad scorpion. There maybe should have been two. Had he have died, the gunners would have all been marked as enemies as they turn on you and try and kill you because you basically get blamed for them losing their payday. So that's how things could have gone. That is not, though, this is a major victory. Caps earned for the settlement. We've introduced ourselves to the gunners. They seem pretty decent. Their chance, their base chance to hit is high, especially compared to settlers, survivors, etc. So they are pretty scary. They've got a, a military outfit going on. I guess you've got to cut off the head to take out their special rules. Uh, they did have one that we didn't really use here. They have a faction rule where... If you're within aura of a commanding officer of any type and you get a kill, you get given a quick action for that. So I think there's one other thing as well that was forgotten because it's not on their cards, it's on their faction card. So they are actually a bit more potent than was shown today, but I'm sure we'll see them in the future. So that is going to conclude this time around. Let me know if this was um, more brief and also to your liking in a more quick play style. Uh, might mean more mistakes, but hopefully keep the videos under 40 minutes, which apparently people wanted. So that's what I'm aiming for. And I will see you in a week. Uh, if you want to support the series, leaving comments, likes, subscribing, all helps. If you want to go above and beyond, consider becoming a channel member. You get access to each new episode a day early. And other series you get to see a week early. You could also check out the channel sponsor. If you buy anything from the affiliate link, I get compensated. So we both get something that way. Or you can press the thanks button. 
Either way, enjoy the rest of your day and I shall see you next week for episode 10 of 13. Ta-ta for now.